and we're here with Todd Flesner uh, watching Valley Homes on TV. You're watching Channel 26, and we air on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m., and look at this clear blue sky and the Berryessa Creek Trail here in Milpitas. We're at? Yeah, another beautiful day here in Milpitas. You never know where we're going to show up, right? You don't. So I we, we, we bounce around town and you know, get to really introduce folks to parts of Milpitas and what's going on around town. Well, we're over here near Hall Park. It's a great uh, park with uh, soccer, basketball courts, and we're on Paseo Refugio is the name of the street uh, near this uh, creek trail uh, that the city dedicated maybe about five, six years ago. And we are here with our guest, Bo Goldie of the Santa Clara Valley Water District. You are the CEO. Yes, I am. Yay! We got the big <laughs> shot here. So we're going to fire away with some questions uh, for you and talk about water district stuff and all the good things that you got going on there. Pleasure to be here. Great. Um, let's start out. How long have you been with the district? I've been with the district for 27 years. Uh, I've worked up in the organization, started as a junior engineer, worked up through the organization, uh, became the CEO about two and a half years ago. Great. Okay, so you know the organization from the bottom up. Maybe tell folks who might not be as familiar with the Water District, what is it that, that the Water District's in charge of? The Water District has primarily three functions. Uh, we are actually the Water Resource Management Agency for the entire county, and we provide services to the community that include providing a reliable supply of water, that's the wholesaler of the water, to the retailers. We provide flood protection to the community and environmental stewardship. So those three components are all focused around water. So we provide that with a single agency that provides water supply, uh, flood protection, and stewardship for the community. Okay, great. Well, let's let's uh, define Milpitas. What is your role here in the city of Milpitas? Well, our role is, is the same. We provide the water supply to uh, to the city of Milpitas. In fact, 40% of the supply comes directly from us, and 60% comes from the Hetch Hetchy system. We provide flood protection. We have a number of capital projects that we have going in, in the in the area, those actually those capital projects provide flood protection, so parcels and businesses don't get flooded when we have the major flood. Actually, that's shifted. This I didn't know it was the 60-40 rule. It used to be I think we got most of our water from Hetch Hetchy, so that's shifted and changed that percentage. Yeah, I'm not sure how it changed over the years. It does fluctuate. Um, we provide the water supply for the entire county, and then we work with San Francisco PUC who owns Hetch Hetchy system. Okay. Okay. So then you you work with other cities providing water and so you've got a series I guess of reservoirs and dams and such infrastructure here in the area. Tell us a little more about that. What specifically do you have in terms of those resources that you manage? We have there in Santa Clara County there's 10 reservoirs that we have. Those reservoirs capture the local water, the local rainfall, capture that and we use that to recharge the groundwater basin and we use that to send to our treatment facilities. We have three treatment plants that deliver the water to the community. Uh, the Calabasas, did I get that right? Calabasas, Calabasas Creek Project, tell us about that. Calabasas Creek Project actually is, is, is a very interesting project. We're very happy that we've completed that project. That is one of our Clean Save Creeks projects, which is a special parcel tax that was passed in 2000. We've actually completed that. Now that project uh, results in the protection of 2,500 homes and businesses in the Saratoga, Sunnyvale, and Cupertino areas, and San Jose also. Okay. Good. Do you have any other projects on the Calabasas that really impact us here in Milpitas? Yeah, we have a few. We have Lower Silver Creek Project, we have the Berryessa Creek Project, and then the Upper and Lower Penitentia Creek Projects. It was funny when we when we met out here. We talked about streets. How I know all the streets, but you know, you're known. You know the creeks. Yeah. Everything's designated by creek. That's amazing. Uh, everything you got going on. Um, what are the steps? you're taking now to educate uh, users regarding, uh, say, water conservation. I know we've read about that. I think I've seen articles in the San Jose Mercury, am I right? Well, that's good. That's uh -huh. good. Because so, we want you to see those articles. Teresa, it's working. Your marketing's working. We, water conservation is, is very important because what it does is it reduces the demand. So we don't have to get as much water supply of water to the community. So it's critical. It requires actually a whole lifestyle change. So what we do is we focus on the entire age group. We focus on the elementary kids. So last year I think we um, educated approximately 18,000 kids within the, within the community. We have a youth stewardship council that focuses on the high school and getting them to understand and be advocates and ambassadors into the high schools to get them to understand that. And then we have a number of programs just like the articles you read. We have 
the website. We have um, an e-newsletter that we send out. And don't you go out to homeowners, they can contact you and you can do a, a, a audit of their home system to see how they can conserve water? Very good, you are correct. We have, we have a program where if somebody wants to have an audit, it's like an audit of their, of their use of water and how it's used, we will have the staff come out for free work with this, the, the resident, go through it, and give them some suggestions on what they can do okay. to save water, which saves money. Saves money in the long run. Excellent. Good. Well, how are we doing in terms of our water supply? I mean, it's been a number of years since we've had drought warnings and those sort of things, but, but how is our, our overall water supply? In, in fact, I just talked to him offline. He's going to be leaving for Sacramento soon. I guess you're going to be talking with the big guns in Sacramento about water, too. Huh? Right. The water supply system that we have, we have we're, we're blessed with a very uh, complex, very... Uh, the significant portfolio of water supply. We have recycled water, we have local water, and we have imported water. Um, our supply system right now today is actually pretty good. We've had a good rainfall season last year, but you never know what's coming. So it's important for us to have a reliable system. One of the things we do have with Santa Clara County is you are over the largest reservoir that we have for the county. It's our groundwater basin. Wow. It's about 350,000 acre feet. That's just a lot of water. Um, it's actually uh, twice as much as we have in all the reservoirs combined. So it's a lot of water. Now what we end up having to do to make sure that that groundwater basin is is maintained at a certain level is we have to import the water. So we have about 55 percent of our water comes through the Sierras, comes through the, the watersheds in the Sierras. 40 percent flows through that Delta, eco, the Delta itself, the Sacramento, Sacramento, San Joaquin Delta, and then we capture that and we recharge that to the basin. Okay. Let me ask you real uh, quickly, I've been thinking, so two and a half years you've been the CEO. Yes, that's got that right. Um, I imagine one of the largest challenges facing you right now would be like an aging infrastructure. Um, I know government agencies and you know folks everywhere that with the aging structure. How are you going to be handling and focusing on safety issues, uh, you know, aging infrastructure and delivery of the system? Our aging infrastructure is one of our priorities. Um, our system is built back in the 30s they started building. Those reservoirs that I mentioned earlier, they were built in 32, 32 and 33. Wow. We're actually looking at those. It was a good year though. You know. it, it was, <laughs> I assume it was a good year. But anyway. So, so we're, looking at the, we're looking at those reservoirs because the knowledge we had back then in terms of the engineering and seismic was different than we have today. So we're going through a whole program evaluating all those to bring those up to today's okay. standards. Okay. And then we have treatment plants. We have treatment plants built in 67. It's running, it's running full tilt for about four months a year. That's 24-7 at the max capacity. So I would guess that once you do that inventory and find out, wrap your arms around what the issues are and what you need to address first, those are uh, policy decisions that go before your board? Or how, how do you handle that? Well, what we do is we keep the board informed as we're moving along on a lot of our investigations and finding out what the conditions are of those assets and we go through a public process of making sure not only our board knows we're trying to get the public to really understand one interesting thing about water supply is people turn on the tap water comes out they don't know or there's no flood waters in their yeah. living room they're happy in, in that, and that getting the, the community's attention is really yep. the big challenge yep. 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 Um, people are so busy you know or my own wife is busy trying to keep things going right. um, it's it's we something take a lot for granted that we've had we're, we're in a country that's blessed um, other I'm gonna get I better get off my soapbox but I mean we're here you know we, we are lucky and I think a lot of those resources we take for granted and we're gonna be having some issues that they're gonna be more costly well to it, manage that and deliver water and this city you know utilities that we need. So. It, it's, it's really amazing when you start telling people what does it cost for a gallon of water. A gallon of water that we supply costs a half a cent. A half a cent. And that's very cheap. You're not going to find another resource that costs you that little. No. Um, as a result, we end up tending the waste. Um, although the conservation program and the education has been great because if you think about it this way, in the last 20 years, the population of Santa Clara County has grown 30%. We use 10% less water than we did 20 years ago. And that is a result of conservation. It's a result of changing the lifestyle, people understanding it, and it goes to the programs of getting out to the community to let them understand what this stuff is. So that's the impact of things like low flow shower heads and um, that's right. Yeah, reduced flow uh, toilets and those sort of things that have been um, 
you know, instituted over the last number of years for folks? We have a number of programs. We have low flow uh, toilet. We have rebate program for that, about $125. Same for clothes washers. Um, and then landscaping. If you replace some of your landscaping, a lot of the landscaping people use are water intensive. We want to be able to educate people that if they use uh, drought tolerant plants, they can save a lot of water, uh, and we can well, they can save a lot of money, and we can save a lot of water. Well, let, me, let me shift gears just real quick. I mean, we have other utilities like Pacific Gas and Electric, and other, your your group has an elected body. Uh, they've been in the newspaper, so I won't yes. I won't have you uh, go ahead and elaborate on that. But how does your elected body integrate? with your staff and, and your folks there and how, I mean, the viewers, if they're um, uh, registered voters, they could be voting for those elected bodies. So why don't you tell folks on how that happens? We have uh, elected board, seven board members, similar to city council, they're elected, except it's countywide. So our jurisdictions and the districts the board members represent are countywide. So their job is really to, one, set policy direction for us. So aggressively protect the groundwater basin make sure the assets are maintained. My job is to make sure that gets done. Their other job is to make sure that I get it done, to hold me accountable and my staff to get this stuff done because it's vital to the community that we get the water out, provide flood protection, and do the environmental stewardship work that we got. Okay. Good. Well, we were talking a, a, a bit about the uh, supply end of things and, and that critical role that the water district provides. We're here in front of a creek as well. You've mentioned flood control. And I know that for a number of folks who own property here in Milpitas, we have some properties that are in flood zones. Mm -hmm. and you've talked about some of the infrastructure projects you have with the creeks. Do you um, anticipate that that's going to have any impact on what, um, what areas are in flood zones in the future and, and the potential for folks to be able to perhaps get property that's currently in a flood zone out? That's good. That's a common question. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. We, uh, our, our program is a and our flood protection site is really a capital intensive program. We have the three projects I mentioned earlier. That should take approximately 15,000 parcels out of the floodplain. When you're in the floodplain, you have to buy FEMA flood insurance, which is, which is, it can be very expensive, exactly. <laughs> exactly, so when we complete our capital project, then you can actually take those parcels out of the floodplain, therefore they're out, they don't have to pay for the insurance. Now, they don't have to pay for insurance for the mortgage. We still encourage them to maintain insurance, although it's not at the same level, because we provide protection to a certain level, which is the 1%. Floods could happen and do happen above that. So, so it's up, up to the individual yes. homeowner to take their property out rather than revising yep. the, the... The district will do that, okay, so, working with the city. So, so that, okay, will, that will result in a renewed flood map, right? Correct. The, that FEMA looks at, and that's what banks in particular look at when they determine whether or not you need to have a flood insurance policy. That's and, and I might add, when I sell a home and we get a like a JCP report, geology, and, and whether the property's in a flood zone or an earthquake zone, hopefully that that would eliminate that and it will not show up in a, in a flood zone and then the buyer won't be required to have a flood insurance. That's right. Okay, good. good. I think that's what we're talking about, leading to that. Yeah. So, you, there's a, you have got a great question here. Can I ask this? Go ahead. Appliance rebates. Do you do any appliance rebates? Yes, we do. Let's talk about that. Yes, we do. Uh, the rebates that we have are, like I mentioned, for low flow uh, toilets, uh, where we'll, we will uh, rebate $125. Okay. And for clothes washers, we'll rebate $125. Now, if you're commercial and you have a commercial um, uh, 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 washing machine washer system, that's $400. And we actually have programs where some of the businesses area, we can have, if they have a good water conservation program, we can rebate up to $50,000. Because it's substantial savings wow. of water is really what it, we're trying to have. Terrific. But where would folks find out more information about the rebate programs and how they might be able to participate in that? The easiest way to do that is valleywater.org is the, is the website that we have. You can always call the district at 265-2600 and they'll get you to the right place. Terrific. Um, anything's on the horizon for the water district in terms of as you look down the road, you know, challenges that you're facing or, or things that you think are, are critical that folks here in Milpitas know about the Santa Clara Valley? Well, the two challenges are really to get the community to really understand what we do and why we do it so they can understand the value of that, uh, to understand that water is very important and it's not wasted. Uh, the other thing, I, it's, it's, it's difficult to say, but we have to say it, is that water is going to cost more in the future. 
we have infrastructure that we have to replace. If the water rates are, and costs are not going to go down. They're, they're going to have to go up. Well, Bo, I thank you very much for taking the time. to. I know you traveled all the way from Allenton Valley to come out here to our sweet city of Milpitas to look at the view of the hills. Isn't it awesome? Isn't this a beautiful place? Beautiful. Great place to live, work, and play right here in Milpitas. We know that. So. Well, well thanks again for joining us here in Milpitas. And um, appreciate you giving us a word on what's happening in the, the water district. Oh, real real quick, pleasure. hold on. Before we get off the air, we have. if you'd like to sign up for the uh, Santa Clara Valley newsletter, oh. What can they do to do that? This is, this is our newsletter. You can sign up right on our website, and it provides an e-newsletter that you'll get electronically, and it provides a lot of information, and I encourage you to, to sign up, get the information, and learn more about water and water resources. Great. Thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. Thank Thanks you for having me. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. This is great. Every day should be like this. It will be when I retire in a few years. I've been planning and saving. Did you save for me? Well, this is unexpected. Where'd you come from? Out of the blue. Just like an illness, an emergency, or a... That's enough, Mr. Unexpected. Savings man. There's still time to plan. Find out how at ChooseToSave.org with a ballpark estimate worksheet. I will. Thanks, savings man. No, thank you. So visit ChooseToSave.org today. I feel like it's all on my shoulders. How am I going to take care of my parents if they develop an eye disease like glaucoma? Glaucoma is the leading cause of blindness in African Americans and Hispanics in the United States. And what about my kids? Will they inherit it? Not to mention my risk factor. I'm really concerned and I need some answers. I'm an ophthalmologist and a scientist supported by AHAF, the American Health Assistance Foundation. We're working to discover breakthrough treatments and a cure for glaucoma. At AHAF.org, we will answer your questions and address your concerns. Learn about glaucoma, its symptoms, risk factors, and treatment options. Also, how to live with or care for someone with the disease. Call 1-800-437-2423 or go to AHAF.org for a free brochure on how eye disease affects all our lives. That's 1-800-437-2423. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching Valley Homes on TV. I'm Debbie Giordano and Todd Flesner. How are you? Doing great. Yep. Oh, getting a little chilly. It's getting a little colder right now, but um, we're taping our show over here at the Coyote Creek. Did I get that Bar right? Barriessa Barriessa and... Creek. Got the right creek. Your boat uh, left, so we don't have a direction. Boat left. We don't have a, we don't have a, a read on that anymore. <laughs> we're on Paseo Refugio Drive out here in the city of Milpitas across from Hall Park at a really nice walking trail. Um, this was a new trail that was uh, developed about five, six years ago and dedicated to uh, City of Pist, which they're looking forward into doing more trails, I understand. Too. Oh, terrific. And doing connections where folks can walk from trail to trail and be able to circulate. That's the value of being in Milpitas. We have great parks, great Absolutely. places for the kids and community to come and, and enjoy the outdoors. And well, I know as we've been out here just uh, you know, for a little while this afternoon putting the show together, we've it's seen nice. lots of folks walking by, uh, walking their dogs, enjoying the, the great weather that we have here yep, in Milpitas. Yep, so yep, yep. a great resource that we have for folks who live here. Yeah, no, absolutely. So. Absolutely. That's the value of Milpitas. So um, let's talk about mortgages real quick. I'm always interested to know what's going on. You send me the updates so I have for the sellers and their marketing packets. What what are we looking at for um, current well, rates right now? Current rates are, are absolutely fabulous. We're about 4% for a conforming loan with no points. Um, near historic lows. Not the all-time lows, but, but very, very close. Very attractive rates, um, which you know makes it a great time to buy because it makes it affordable. Uh, the other thing that's been happening in the area of mortgages, recently um, there's been an announcement about an enhancement to a program that's been available to help people whose properties may be underwater okay. to refinance. I think I read about that. Right. And that's been limited um, to only 125% of the current value. And so there are new um, guidelines that are out actually just now, just came out this morning, that, um, that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have released that will remove that 125% requirement. So, um, so folks whose properties have gone down more than um, 
than would have, would have ordinarily been allowed for this refinance program may now have an opportunity to refinance. That's going to be great. That might uh, halt some of these foreclosures and short sales that we're seeing where the folks are literally underwater and just walking away. Exactly. I mean, it, it's not been uncommon where I'll talk to somebody who's interested in refinancing and we take a look at do they qualify in terms of their, their loan uh, being eligible for this program, but we run into a value issue. Right. And so this will remove that one obstacle. And, and maybe help homeowners secure their property and be able to stay in their homes. Exactly. Or jump ship. Some of them are leaving, then buying a short sale. And, you know, I mean, the circulation in the market is incredible right now. People well, circulating through. yeah, pe people are looking for, for options, right? Yeah. And so this provides an option. And, you know, it does give people an opportunity to, to stay in their home. Um, and so it might be something that's worth looking at. If you looked at this program in the past, oftentimes referred to as HARP, the Home Affordable Refinance Program, um, it may be a good time just to re-examine that to see if, if the change in guidelines has impacted you and, and might make the program now more affordable. And that's great. That's the reason why we tape these shows every two weeks is to bring folks uh, current information. The laws and the federal government is always changing you know, whatever's going on there to, to help the lending right. industry, to stabilize the market, um, and how that affects you here in Milpitas. Right. So. You know, there's another development as well. You know, recently we've seen the high balance conforming loans. It used to be 729, 750 right. was the right. loan limit for that. Right. It's been reduced to 625, yes. 500. Um, there's legislation that looks like it's gonna be signed that could bring that number back up to 725. Uh, or 729, 750, you get all these numbers and it's hard to keep them straight sometimes, even for me who works with them <laughs> every day. The numbers, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's, there's some hope there on the horizon that we'll get those uh, higher loan limits back. Now that would only be for FHA loans, um, but for folks who are thinking about you know, buying a home with a low down payment, um, that provides a little bit more buying power as well for an FHA loan. All right, I see the lights on at the park. I'm gonna have about one or two minutes of daylight left. Let me run some stats real quick. <laughs> Let's find out what's Don't wanna leave before you know where the market's going in Milpitas. Single family homes today, pending 82, 65 active, 131 sold in the last six months, of which 72 were under 500,000. Let's look at a year ago, 77 pending, 73 active, 124 sold in the last six months, of which 57 were under 500. Boy, Todd, you know what that means. You, the pendulum was going the other way, now it's going back up. There's less properties under 500. So we have been hit the lap. We are seeing, we are seeing a, a market change, aren't we? Well, we certainly it's are. It's actually going the other way. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. You know, we, we you know, like to keep track to see what the trends are and where the market is headed wow. and, so, and bring that information to wow, folks. Wow, it is going so, downhill. Um, and what's happening with condos? Condos, 48 pending, 25 active, and 67 sold in the last six months. A year ago, there were 58 pending, 48 active, and 60 also sold in the last six months. I guess condo market, affordable. Mm -hmm. People are jumping in because it's cheaper to buy now than to rent. That's correct. And uh, those that can are doing it. So. Well, and that's what I'm hearing from a lot of folks who are interested in being homeowners who perhaps have been renting. And so it's a great time to explore. We talk about the affordability and it, it, actually it is possible now to get into property in many instances for less than what you're renting. Well, I've got a couple open houses this weekend. I'll be busy as a bee, so I'll let, I'll let you know what the foot traffic looks like and our people out there you know, taking their 4% loans and going out and shopping. So. Well, and as we enter the holiday season too, that can be a great time for people to buy because sometimes the competition for property is not as uh, significant. So true, so true. Todd, so. you and your family have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thanks, Deb. Same to you. Happy Thanksgiving to, to folks as well. And if you need to reach one of us here, uh, you can reach me at Giordano DJ at AOL.com if you want any questions to be answered on the show be happy to help you. And I, I can be reached by email at Todd, T-O-D-D, at sternmortgage.com. That's S-T-E-R-N and the word mortgage spelled out. Thank you for watching another edition of Valley Homes on TV. See you